Hi, my name is Jamie Grundy. I'm an independent trainer, educator and researcher specialising in the field of criminal justice. So I'm here today to talk to you about a little film called Me and My Convictions. This is the first part. You can find the second part afterwards as well. Um, and basically it's a short film dealing with a couple of things specifically around handling criminal convictions, a bit of best practice, some simple tools and bits and pieces of things that will hopefully give you some good pointers about where to go, help you rewrite your future. Basically, this first film, part one, Me and My Convictions, it's all about if you have criminal convictions, about how you can find out when they are spent and what spent means. I'll also help to explain what you need to tell a potential employer, or even if you need to tell them anything at all, and why that might be. So I'm going to give you some pointers there as well. Um, I'm also going to include some examples of success stories for people who've got convictions, people who have been in prison, uh, and how they have been able to turn that negative into a positive in terms of their journey after jail and where they've gone and what they've done and where they've been quite successful too. And they may be people that you've heard of, but they might not be as well. But genuinely, you know, they're people who've got convictions and they've done some really good stuff afterwards. So first of all, the first thing I'm going to talk about is how you can find out if your convictions are spent. And um, what does spent mean? Is it important? And if so, why is it important? Well, the first thing to know about is something called the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act of 1974. And what that states is it enables some criminal convictions to be ignored after what's called a rehabilitation period. Why is that important? Well, the act basically is there so that people don't have a mark on their records for the rest of their life. That can be quite important. Um, and that's basically because of what they call a relatively uh, minor offence in their past. What that is, it could be anything. So what, that's, what that basically talks about is something called the rehabilitation period. Now the rehabilitation period, that's automatically determined by the sentence that somebody has given, no matter what, that's, um, what that conviction was for. It's all about the sentence. And basically, after that period, if there's been no further um, convictions, then that conviction is said to be spent. And so, with some exceptions, for example, uh, when applying for a job, maybe in insurance or maybe going through civil proceedings, it may not be, need to be disclosed. In the future which is really 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 useful so spent is basically means that that conviction has been done it's been dealt with and you've gone through the rehabilitation period and you can move onwards and you don't have that like i say that minor mark on your record for the rest of your life because of the rehabilitation of offenders act now that word spent is important and the word why it's important is because it can have real implications going forward but also the spent period is down to the sentence that you were given, not necessarily this, the time that you've spent in prison. Um, so if you, were, if you were released early from prison and you were on license or given a community order, for example, um, it's still down to the sentence that you were given. Okay, So your spent period wouldn't be reduced even if you were released from prison early. So multiple convictions for some people, they've got more than one conviction, or if you don't know where to start and maybe you don't have a support worker, how can you find out whether your conviction is spent or not? So some people think about stuff like a DBS check, a criminal records check in, in old money. Yeah, that's one way, but that costs money. So what you can do is a couple of other things that you can do. So the first one is if you've got maybe several um, convictions or prison sentences behind you and you don't really know where to start because you can't remember where they started and where they finished and when they were and where they were then what you can do now under GDPR which is all about the information that's kept online um, about you you have got the right to apply for um, through a freedom of information request to the police for any information that they may have about you on their records on the police national computer database. Now you've got the right to do that. Now what's good about that now is that that process is not only relatively simple to do, but also it's free, so it doesn't cost you anything. 
It can take a little bit of time, so it can take up to about 40 days, especially if there's quite a bit that they've got to go through in terms of getting all that record of information and send it back to you. But essentially, it's a really good starting point if you want to find out what there may well be online about you from the police. A word of warning, though, it doesn't give you anything, any information about convictions or prison sentences or community sentences or anything like that. It's just a starting point. But what it will be really useful for is to start to build up a picture about uh, maybe times that you've been involved in the police and then you can start to build up your own picture from there. That's really, really good. Um, so that's a really, really good starting point. Once you've got an idea of what your convictions are and the sentences that you were given and the sentence length, um, then you can start to move on from that point there. But if you really want to first start off with that, uh, that police national computer database, what you need to do is go to www.acro.police.uk forward slash subject dash access. I'll put that on screen for you so you'll be able to follow that link. Follow that link and find out the information that you've got. After that point, you're talking about disclosure. So once you know when your convictions, what your convictions are and the length of those convictions, then what you need to do then is to sit to try and work out um, when your conviction is spent. Now, there are a whole um, list of um, uh, sort of equations and calculations that have got to be worked out from there in terms of working out when your conviction is spent. It can take you quite a while, but the good thing is there's a really simple and useful and easy to use online tool called the Disclosure Calculator. Um, and that can really, really help you because you can put in one conviction, you can put in multiple convictions and you can find out when your conviction is spent from there. It's free to use for individuals, so it's not going to cost you anything. Crucially, it's confidential, so you're not going to be speaking to anybody on the phone about it. Um, also, it gives results instantly. So if you've maybe made a mistake or you've missed something out, you can go back in and tweak it. You need to go online. You need to go to www.disclosurecalculator.org.uk and I'll make sure that that link is there on screen for you. That's a really, really good tool. It's provided free for individuals. It's from a charity called Unlock. Unlock are a charity for specifically there to support people with convictions. And I definitely urge you to check them out. I'm trying to work out when your convictions are spent is ever so important because once you've done this, you can plan accordingly. Um, many people I meet who maybe have got convictions in their past don't necessarily understand what that means and how they can work out when their convictions are spent. But once I help them to sit down with them, we go through things like the disclosure calculator and we can work out maybe, for example, if the disclosure is spent or maybe what point in the future it will be spent, then it's really, really uh, been really empowering to see how that weight has been lifted from their shoulders and how they've been able to move on really has been really important for them. So go back, go to that disclosure calculator, put your details in there and work out your, when your conviction is spent and then you can really start to plan accordingly. Because at the end of the day, it's your information and you need to know um, how you can use that information. So the second part of this film is about whether you need to tell a, a, a potential employer and how to do that, really. So... Um, Basically, what you need to tell a potential employer is dictated to by the role that you might be applying for in terms of work. So there are two kinds, um, essentially, of roles that you may be applying for with work. Um, and they can be covered by three different types of DBS checks. One is a basic DBS check, which is for any particular role. There are two other kinds. One which is a standard, which are for often things like licensed professions. And the other one is enhanced, that a lot of people know if they work with children or um, vulnerable adults, they've often asked to do an enhanced check. But for any role that you might be applying for, in theory, the role could be covered by a basic DBS check. Whether, it is, whether the employer requires a DBS check as part of that role is their choice, and they may not do it. So when you apply for that role, if it's not covered by the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act, 
it will probably be eligible for, um, sorry, if it's covered, then it will be eligible for a basic DBS check. But as part of that application, if there is not a question about convictions or criminal records, then no, you don't need to disclose your convictions. If, however, as part of the application, there is a question about convictions, then you should disclose any offences which are unspent under the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act. So any convictions which are unspent, you should disclose those. OK, if you're going for a role which may be subject to a standard or enhanced DBS check, again, when you apply for that role, it's down to the employer as to whether they ask about convictions or criminal records. If there's no question about convictions or criminal records, then you don't need to disclose. If, however, there is a, a question about convictions or criminal records, then you need to disclose any convictions or cautions um, which are not yet filtered by the DBS uh, check. So that's important to know. So if, there, if there is not a question, you don't need to disclose. But if there is a question, then you should disclose. The second film will come on to talk about disclosure in more detail. So don't worry about that now. The third, the third thing about this film really is about some examples of success stories because sometimes when people think they've got a, a conviction in their past, they think that's it, the die is cast, there's nothing I can do. I totally disagree with that. Um, and there are plenty of examples of people who are successful and they've turned that negative of a prison sentence to the positive advantage of employment and writing some unique and incredible journeys after jail. Why is that important? Well, several organisations have made that experience of being involved with the criminal justice system the kind of bedrock of their journey going forward. They bring the experience that they've had from that particular time in their life. They bring a level of authenticity that other people are unable to bring. Um, and they also bring not only a voice for people who are in similar circumstances, but a passion for why they want to help people. And that really comes through quite strongly. It also brings a really big added dimension to any programme or any employment intervention that they may be working on. A couple of big examples that are important to know about. So one of them is LJ Flanders and Cell Workout. Now LJ Flanders was a gentleman who did a, a prison sentence and when he was in prison, he liked to keep himself fit, but he didn't like going to the prison gym. Prison gyms are pretty macho places, didn't enjoy it at all. So what he did instead was he did his own little workout system in his cell. A lot of his uh, fellow prisoners realised he was in pretty good shape and asked him for workout tips. So he would write them down, he would give them little workout tips. And he was doing that little workout tip in his cell. Why is that important? Well, because he was doing it in a small confined space, but he was using nothing more than his own body weight. So he wasn't using sort of like big machines or big weights. He was just using his own body weight. And he was in keeping himself in pretty good sh in pretty good shape. It also helped with his positive well-being. You know, very important if you're in prison. Um, when he came out of prison, he used that experience of doing workouts in a cell to create his own workout, which he called Cell Workout. He published a book. Um, it's now on its second run. And LJ now revisits prisons, including ones here in Wales, to talk to. Um, prisoners about his experiences, he introduces the cell workout and basically says to them, you know, you could be where I am now. He's a qualified fitness instructor, he's written his own book and he's a really well-known public speaker on the circuit talking about his experiences of prison and how he made that the bedrock of his life going, going forward. Another example is a gentleman called Javed Ali um, who set up an organisation called Doodar Embroidery and another organisation now called Workwear Embroidery. Now, Javid was um, an individual in a prison in Wakefield, I think it was. And when he was up there, he, um, he was in the print shop and they had a very large sewing machine there that nobody knew how to work because they'd lost the instructions. He had a bit of time to kill. So he taught himself how to work that sewing machine. He got it working and was successful and basically opened up a new area of prison industry for the prison. They were delighted. Um, and he used that experience so that when he came out, he set up his own embroidery company, Doodar Embroidery. They did really, really well. 
um, and he got a contract to um, embroider the shirts for Man City's FA Cup Youth Cup winning team a couple of years ago. He employed people then that were ex-offenders and he's been able to go on and talk about his experiences, not only of being in prison, but how he used the skills that he learnt into, um, to going forward into business. And I think he's now an ambassador for the Prince's Trust. There's also other individuals. So, for example, Francesca Barker, the Barker Baker, she called herself. She was a person who's in and out of, of trouble previously um, until eventually an exasperated support worker got her onto a, um, a baking programme. And she absolutely loved it and she threw herself into baking. And she trained herself up to become an artisan baker, set herself up in a little shop um, in Rochdale, up in the north of England, and she called herself the Barker Baker. And she used that um, USP of being involved with the criminal justice system and now baking some lovely bread as, the, as her um, selling point. So people would come to her every morning, her shop would have big queues outside, people were trying to get this delicious smelling bread. And she did really, really well. Typically, like a lot of people who've been through the criminal justice system who want to um, give back, when she employed a member of staff, she employed somebody who was um, themselves, you know, been in prison. So, you know, she did really, really well. She's now, you know, um, still doing the baking and she's, she's working for university and doing really, really well. Other examples as well, Lindsay Barker, she's a probation case manager in Liverpool. Um, she was a lady who, um, whose father actually was, was tragically killed um, during the Hillsborough disaster in the 80s. And that basically set her off on a sort of a path of destruction and drink, uh, alcohol and driving offences. And eventually, uh, going through the prison system, she engaged in a rehabilitation programme, managed to turn her life around, reconnect with her family, kick alcohol. And she was working as a volunteer for the probation service up in the northwest of England. A position came up and she was encouraged to apply for that role. She got the role and her, her um, colleagues and teammates and managers were absolutely delighted because she's able to tip, speak to clients who are going who need a probation officer in a way that other people aren't able to. She's able to relate to them and they're able to understand her and she's doing ever so well there and she's supporting people who you know, just a few years ago, she was walking in their shoes so they can understand exactly um, that, that she knows their, their issues and can help them going forward. There are a lot of other lived experience employers out there as well. So here in South Wales, you've got GDAS, Gwent Drug and Alcohol Services, St Giles Trust, the Wallach and the Salvation Army. They all value people who've got that lived experience of the criminal justice system. So if you've been through that particular journey yourself, there's organisations out there that want you to be involved with them. You can start off as a volunteer and then look for any employment opportunities going forward. So that's the first film. Hopefully, it's, I've tried to explain to you that if you've got criminal convictions, then this film will have explained how you can find out when they are spent and help you to understand what you need to tell an employer or if you need to tell them anything at all. It's also the importance about using your experience of turning that negative into a positive of you going forward and showing you how you can be more than just what happened to you, you know, a while ago. Help you to see what happened to you then and help you to rewrite your future. So thank you for watching and make sure you check out my second film. Thank you.